Control station, is that Atlantic clear of uh, vessel? Control copies. And bridge copies. Turning my lights on and turning on my tilt. Woo! This is a voice slate, voice slate for dive, hotel, 1995, ETC time is 1848.00, mark. Probably give us a small, uh, small red light. That's fine. <laughs> nice. Forty-one K, no problem. Okay, um, we're good. We're almost at hand over time. Cages are good. Ground faults are good. Hand over. Control van deck. Uh, that's us all. Stop at five zero. Right. Control copies. We are ready for control. All right, you have control. Okay, let's go. Get that set up. I can probably do. Start with 20. Roger. We can start with 25. Yeah, and let me know when I can stop the ship. Uh, yeah, we can stop the ship now. Thanks. Okay. Roger. Oh. 
26 is fine. Okay. I'm just going to leave it here. Yeah, Roger. Roger. Okay, I think we're looking good. We can speed up to 30. Roger. Uh, just over an hour and a half. An hour and 40 minutes, maybe. Which speed up to 30. Okay. Oh. Moving a little bit. There we go. It's probably good. Yep. Okay. Not going to touch it. Okay. Good. Everything's happy. Hello. 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 Hi. Hi. How's everybody doing? We're happy. Yeah, me too. I'm excited. <laughs> Much happier today than last night. Yes. <laughs> oh, last night. Oh. About last night. <laughs> Live up once you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, everyone, people of the world, uh, welcome. We're just started descending. Um, this is our fifth dive of the expedition. We are diving at an isolated seamount on the western region of the Johnson Atoll. We'll be making our way up a ridge. Um, we're diving down to about 3,200 feet, or meters, oh my god. 3,200 meters, um, so it will take a little while. Um, do we have an estimated time of how long this will take to get down there? An hour and 40 minutes. Really? I thought it was going to be much longer than that. Cool, We're so an hour and 40 minutes we should reach bottom. Yeah, um, approximately. Uh, I'm Stephanie, a natural science and children's book illustrator on the ship as a science communication fellow. Um, let's do real introductions, everybody. I like that you have to specify now. Yes. <laughs> um, last time I started with the front row, it was a mess. So let's start with the back row. <laughs> Maronke, do you want to go first? Sure, sure thing. Hi, I'm Maronke Harris. I'm a science manager in training aboard the EV. That's a good shot at us. <laughs> <laughs> and off the Nautilus, I am a PhD student at the University of Victoria. I'm also the host of today's Instagram takeover. It's Ooh. not up yet, but it will be after my shift. <laughs> so, four hours. <laughs> Um, hello, I'm Paula Rodriguez. I'm, a pa I'm part of the science team uh, aboard of the EV Nautilus. Um, I'm also a postdoctoral researcher at the MCC. I study squad lobsters, so I'm a huge fan of them. <laughs> I'm Rob. I'm the watch leader of the famous 8 to 12 watch. Take me to your leader. I'm uh, also the geologic lead on this expedition, and I'm at the University of Rhode Island, the Graduate School of Oceanography. Beautiful. Front row, you want to go? Yeah, after you gave it to us, badly. Well, <laughs> <laughs> we won't look at that. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Elias, and um, I am a navigator and also a mapper on board the EV Nautilus. And I am also a graduate student at the Center for Coastal and Ocean Mapping, University of New Hampshire. And I'm majoring in ocean engineering, ocean mapping. So I love to map, you know. <laughs> I'm Trevor. I'm in the Herc seat. I am an ROV pilot. Uh, I'm Annabelle. I'm in the Atalanta seat. And I'm the intern, the ROV intern here. Um, 
and when I'm not here, I'm an undergraduate at Oregon State University. Go Beavs. Nice. Go Beavs has become a part of the, the whole thing. <laughs> uh, Dave Robertson, lead video engineer on this expedition, sitting in the video seat, zooming in on things. And uh, when I'm off the ship, I live in Anchorage, Alaska, sometimes on the coast of Oregon. Thanks, everybody. Um, a lot of people in chat were tuned in last night, and we're all worried about Herc, but our talented, talented uh, ROV team just needed to do some maintenance, and we're good. We're good to go. All good. Thanks, ROV team. Thank you. And thanks, chat. I'm sure chat says you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Chat says, "Good morning, Nerd Watch." Ooh. No, are we Nerd Watch now? It's a famous eight to twelve. <laughs> we only said like one and a half slightly nerdy things once. Like I don't think that makes us the Nerd Watch. <laughs> I think it does. Just, just the front row. Just the front row. <laughs> <laughs> Trevor is excited about that. <laughs> it was jubilating. <laughs> I think every watch is nerd watch. Like, I don't know, we're a ship full of ocean explorers. That's pretty nerdy. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and I'm, that's a good way to think about it. <laughs> and I'm sure, like, if the other watches, you know, talk in depth about, like, nerdy stuff, they would also be considered the nerd watch. We just happen to mention some, quote, nerdy things. Yeah. Briefly, might I add, briefly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have viewers from Tennessee. Hello, Tennessee. We have viewers from Kauai. Hello. Or Ola. Or not Ola. I'm sorry. Aloha. Oh, I'm still waking up. I've been up since uh, 5.30 a.m. I had to do an interaction with Rob. He did great. <laughs> yeah. That, that'll put anybody to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, chat's reminding me. We do have a word of the day. They want it to be, um... Boitroidal? No. Let's see. Hold on, wait. Let me just make sure this is a word. It is. Okay, good. Um, I thought it was. But, you know, I can never be too short. They want it to be benthic, but it's not going to be that. I have the word. Um, I actually have two words. Um, separate words. So there's one set of words that's two words put together, and then there's another word that's one word. Ferromanganese crust. No. That was already the word. Yes, last time. Well, that would time. be very tricky to do it twice, so I was yeah. just you know, thinking maybe you're being really tricky. And you said it's not benthic, right? No. Okay. They wanted it to be, but chat, I choose. And it's not boitroidal either. No, that's uh, a fun one, though. How about Alan Thick? No. That's a Canadian shot out there. How about what? Alan Thick? Who's Alan Thick? Wasn't he an actor? Robin Thick's oh. father? Oh. I don't know. I didn't know Robin Thick had a famous father. Yeah, well, he, he was on a couple of shows in the uh, 90s and stuff. Oh, okay. Cool. Chat says hi from the Netherlands. Glad to see and hear my favorite watch again. <laughs> Thanks, hey. Chad. Thanks, Chad. <laughs> Dad joke watch, nerd watch, and what was the third one? I think it was just dad joke watch and nerd watch. No, eight to Rob 12. had a good one. Oh, eight to Ro 12, famous eight to twelve. Yeah. <laughs> Those are your three options. <laughs> I haven't seen them say dad joke watch in like a couple watches though, so maybe that one was fading. On We've evolved. Uh -huh. Challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was waiting for Dave to chime in. <laughs> you want to do some of this? Sure. Okay, we we'll get it set up. Chat asks, does that make us Nautilus nerds? I'll take it. Uh, I don't know if chat's referring to themselves being Nautilus nerds or to us being Nautilus nerds. 
But we can all be if you want. I like that, all of us. They also want to know, have we seen any ocean demons? Mm -hmm. I don't know about demons, but we've seen some pretty cool stuff so far. I think deep down squat lobsters are demons. Deep down squat lobsters yeah. are demons? What does that make Paula then? <laughs> why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why? Well, they got these pincers, they look look intimidating. These no. long arms. No. They look, they look cute. like they do look cute and they look like they're constantly throwing a party. Yeah, Cuz they're true. always holding them up in the air. I or the water. Deep sea demons come from hydrothermal vents. You would know. And <laughs> speaking of hydrothermal vents. Ooh, vent fact. Vent fact. fact. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know? that in the uh, Atlantic Ocean at the Mid-Atlantic Ridge or around there, there is a vent field called the Lost City Vent Field. And the reason why it's called Lost City is because of the way that it looks. A lot of the vents there are inactive and they're much lighter in color than the sulfide rock vents that we see all over the world because they're made of calcium carbonate. So they're one of the most unique vent fields. Google it, check it out. There's your vent fact. Can you repeat <laughs> the vent field one more time? Lost City vent field on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Let me look it up. Have you been there? I wish. I was supposed to be there in January. Oh, what happened? Just didn't work out? Something happened with a ship. <laughs> oh. But I'm going in October. Not there, but the Galapagos Rift. Oh, wow. This one's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I think today is a good day I'm to ask you all my questions, Trevor. I've been compiling questions for you on wow. all of these. <laughs> yeah, thanks. And if you check out my Instagram takeover and follow my SciComm account, you can come to the Galapagos Rift too. And what is your SciComm <laughs> account? Imaginative Sci. It's the word imaginative and then S-C-I. I am the imaginative scientist. That's my SciComm persona. We're going to get you... Um, Insta famous. <laughs> Again, that'll be up after my shift. It's not up yet. You should have posted Instagram like post. a. You should have posted an in the control van story. I want to. I have a. I have a vision. <laughs> oh yeah, I got you. I had a vision too. <laughs> but then I ended up posting us playing spoons. So. Okay. My vision died towards the end of the day. <laughs> Chat is just full of compliments this morning. I'm honored. We're all superstars, they say. You're a superstar, too. Super duper star. They say dead vibes watch has not been forgotten. <laughs> it's only a matter of time and most likely your PM shift. They think we get crazy at night. <laughs> Depends on how much sleep we've had. Chat's saying the Mid-Atlantic Ridge had an earthquake about an hour ago. Really? At 6.0. I'm going to look it up. That's big for a mid-ocean ridge. I bet you it's on a transform fault. Betcha. Verifying the chat facts. Yeah, the Lost City vent field is so unique compared to almost every other field we've seen. Almost every other field we've seen has been on the ridge axis, ah. where the Lost Lost City is actually on a massif that's uplifted along the transform fault. Oh, yeah, look at Would that. that be why there's so much inactivity? Because it's away from where the new seafloor is being created? It's different. I mean, the whole process. I think, it, I think if I remember, it's driven a lot by uh, uh, alteration of the mantle, the serpentinite. So it's a uh, methane base. 
through oh. the uh, serpentinization, not so much through the heat flow. Very cool. Yeah, there was a 6.0. Where's it at? At the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Let's find it. Uh, do I, uh, <laughs> you click on this? Do you know how to read? I don't know how to read this. I do. Okay. Zoom out. Let's see what's that long on it. Where do you want me to click? Yeah. Click on the interactive map. Zoom out. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. It's in the Central Atlantic. It's on a transform fault, actually a large offset transform fault between South America and Africa, separating the South American plate and the African plate. And the uh, the beach ball says it's a transform fault. It's a, a strike slip fault. So that's interesting. This is saying 6.5. Well, sometimes it takes a while to get the actual corrected one. You said that was big for an ocean earthquake? For an ocean one, that's that's big. What does that mean? It's uh, it's on the Richter scale. And so every number you go up, is a it's a 10 times increase in the amount of energy that's released. Mm -hmm. So most ones along the ridge axis are usually less than 4. So this is probably 100 times larger than most of them. Wow. I mean, the famous one in uh, Anchorage, Alaska, I think was 9.4, which is, it only goes up to 10, <gasps> if I remember correctly. 9.2 on the okay. open-ended Richter scale. Wow. I mean, the, the six, and you know, is often what you see on the uh, San Andreas Fault region, which is a transform fault on land out in the ocean. But it's a similar plate boundary. Oh my god, Annabelle has the arm in front of her. Go, Annabelle. Um, yeah, chat, thank you for that earthquake update. Does anyone want to put in a guess about the first thing we're going to see at the bottom? I'll wait for Rob's answer. <laughs> <laughs> I say rocks and sand. I think we land on a lobster and it goes squat. <laughs> we're going to squat yeah. a small lobster. <laughs> uh, today I'll guess sand. I'll guess the crinoid. Crinoid for the win? Crinoid, yep. That's what I'm going with. Any crinoid. Any crinoid. Oh, look at channel three, everybody. No pressure. Oh, uh, get to watch Annabelle manipulate. I'm so happy for you, Annabelle. <laughs> Trevor, do you kind of want to explain the the stuff Annabelle's using? Yeah, she's using the miniature version of the arm that we have here in the control van, the craft controller. Oop, hold on. Yeah, just press the halt button. Yep, good. You don't want a long press. Yes. Uh, yeah, miniature version of itself, the craft controller and she's moving it around, getting a feel for it. Right now, all the joints are locked out except for the end, except for the wrist. So uh, it's a good learning tool that way. You can't bonk into anything and um, get a feel for how it moves in your hand, how to hold it, how to grip it, a couple different ways to grip. Um, so practicing all that, learning where the buttons are, and then as she gets more experience, we'll add more joints in. And hopefully soon enough, she'll be grabbing rocks. <gasps> wow. And you've been doing this for years, right, Trevor? How long did it take you to kind of master? Um, I don't know. This, you can never be truly perfect at this. You gotta keep practicing. It's a, it's a, it's a skill. You just keep working on it. I've been doing it for years, but uh, 
I still have a long way to go of learning how to use it. I, I'm imagining Trevor has like a recliner at home with a setup. He's <laughs> 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 not reach, actually piloting. He, he can reach over and grab yeah. himself a beer if he needs to, <laughs> uh, or, or an adult beverage. Wobbly pop. So some uh, goals for this dive, I don't remember if I said this already. We're looking for uh, biodiversity and geological formations. We're going to be sampling some some samples of things. Yeah, corals, sponge, um, or the other organisms associated with corals. Uh, we are also interested in some um, squat lusters, mm -hmm. sea pens, and any other interesting thing that we can uh, say that is a first record, first association, novel species, and so on. Other than your squat lobsters and sea pens, like last dive, we we focused on some sea stars. Is there any like focus? Sea other star, than yeah. There are uh, researcher interested on uh, also sea stars, and we were collecting some of them that could be different from others that we have been collecting mm -hmm. in other uh, cruises in the area. Also, um, uh, we, we are interested in worms living on black corals. So yeah, this is the kind of things that we expect to collect in terms of biological diversity. Cool. And of course, like always, we'll be collecting some rocks. Gotta get the rocks. Gotta get the rocks. And I mean, what are you looking for with the rocks? Uh, pretty much consistently a, a relatively fresh rock, basalt, if we can. And if there are limestones here, I'm not really sure if there are some old reef materials that would be very, very interesting. I mean, our last dive was, I mean, it was incredibly both biologically and geologically that uh, some spectacular views, some really interesting samples, mm -hmm. things we hadn't seen yet. So. It was really, uh, really informative. And this dive, uh, hopefully some, the same, but we're actually quite a bit deeper. Mm -hmm. The last dive we started at 2,000 and it went up to about 1,300. This time we're going to be at deeper. We're starting at 3,200 and hopefully coming up to near 2,100. But wow, we, yeah. we're, we're not expecting to, to reach the summit this time, but that's not really our goal. Mm -hmm. We want to characterize the deeper areas. And uh, after our 16 hours, we'll uh, we'll be up top and ready to move on. Cool. Does anyone know how far away we are from the last area that we dived in? Uh, <laughs> was it what? 16 hours. I can't remember what the t time wise. We, yeah, we, I don't remember. Traveled. It's all a blur. <laughs> I, can, I can try to get that. Wow. Uh, And while you're looking for that, people are asking what were the fish that we saw when we first put Herc in the water. Did, did anyone know? Kind of. Were see? they were they small? I didn't see they them. They look. They were big. It was a school. Oh, if they were big, I'm not sure. Normally, you can get lantern fish as you're descending. No, I think it was some sort of a tuna or something. I couldn't tell. It was oh, wahoo wow. or tuna. Yeah, they weren't sharks, chat. They were they were a fish, so maybe a tuna of some kind. Um, the first of like big, bigger creatures we've seen on blue water. Yeah, so it's about two sixty, two six zero kilometers away. Okay, so that's yeah. Yeah, that's a good distance. Yeah. So let's say uh, away from 140 dive nautical miles. One nine nine three. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I can I can get that for you. Not no, close. that's fine. I, it's it's about two divided by two. It's close enough. So, 
actually 1.857 or 1.852 is the actual <laughs> yeah Chat asks, are we there yet? <laughs> <laughs> we are currently uh, 800 meters and we're headed to 3,200. So this is just a guess, but I don't think we're close to there yet. <laughs> yeah, we're a little over an hour and 15 minutes from the bottom. So just after 10.30, maybe 10.40 on the bottom local. Chat must have slept well last night because they're just so nice. I can't. They haven't been this nice before. <laughs> Extra kind chat today. Thank you, chat. Yeah, they're giving shout outs to Annabelle. They say, go, Annabelle. Giving shout outs to Trevor for fixing the ROV. Oh, I didn't fix it. Well, they think you did. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, the team is great. We all worked as a team. I slept through most of it. <laughs> no, the team is great. We all support each other and all work together. I couldn't have done it without everybody involved. There's six people in the RV team, plus TJ is the deck chief. He's also helping out. Um, yeah, all of us. Is there an easy explanation what happened, or...? The sea vent vented the wrong way and uh, got a little tiny bit, a couple drips inside the bottle. So in an abundance of caution, we recovered, cleaned it out, changed the vent out, and now it is keeping water on the correct side of the vehicle. It's funny it lasted, oh, I don't know, several hundred dives to thousands of meters, but failed at 10 meters. <laughs> I mean, that's good though, right? It is good, yes. I'm very <laughs> happy it failed at the surface. I don't understand it, but I'm happy about it. So we hit the oxygen uh, minimum at about 500 meters again. today? Yep, it was a minimum of 25 micromoles per liter at 611 meter depth. And are we rising? The oxygen's rising now? Yep, right now we're at oxygen concentration of 36 and a depth Lock of 883. Just don't, that's so it. breathe easy. <gasps> oh, I understand. <laughs> How long is today's I'll dive? I'll show you that at some point. Um, There's I other think modes we're going you can get into. Si about 16 oh, hours. Just trying to show Correct. one thing at a time. So I guess we're the blue crew b both times going down and coming up today. Don't remind me. I have to think about what to talk about <laughs> for the next. For some reason, water. I don't think that's hard for you. <laughs> I do like to talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can you talk and draw and illustrate at the same time? No. Not really, no. Um, I can really talk and think at the same time, to be honest. But... Um, yeah, usually I'm I'm pretty like focused or I'll have to like pause or do something simple. Do you listen to music when you sketch? Do you find that useful? Um in the past actually I would watch Nautilus while drawing. Oh really? Yeah. Full um, circle you'd, you'd moment. Now you're on Nautilus. I know. <laughs> I would I would be in the chat too. I would ask a lot of questions in the chat. So <laughs> Come full circle. Um, yeah, but otherwise, I, I'll listen to music. I'll, I have, I have a, um, 
a guilty pleasure of watching influencers do vlogs on, on YouTube. <laughs> um, I don't like to admit it, but here you are, world. I, I watch influencers. Um, and then that, and I watch people game as well. Um, they're asking, is it 16 hours total dive time that includes recovery and descent? So yes. So not 16 hours at the bottom, but 16 hours for the whole thing. Yeah, probably about 12 hours on the bottom. Mm-hmm. Annabelle getting a couple more shout outs. They say girl power. Um, chat says, tell us more about underwater earthquakes and plate tectonics and vent fields. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that's actually my, my one one of my true loves is plate tectonics. Really? I thought it was rocks. And earthquakes. No, rocks just kind of get in the way. Just like <laughs> the water gets in the way of what I like to really look <laughs> at. Well, I mean, uh, there are basically three types of plate boundaries in plate tectonics. You have mid-ocean ridges, which are separating. And they separate at about, uh, you know, as fast as your fingernails grow in the Atlantic and as fast as your hair grows in the Pacific. Oh my gosh. You know, just give you an idea. No. It's, it's really slow. And uh, the crust there is relatively weak and thin. And so the earthquakes there are what we call extensional or normal earthquakes, and they're relatively weak. These are some of the things you'd see probably out in the basin and range, sort of uh, that sort of region. Wait, you said it was slow? I. It, it's slow, yeah. That's faster than I would think it would be, though. Yeah. As fast as your hair and fingernails? Yeah. That's fast, yeah. unless your hair grows really slow. <laughs> and then uh, along the mid-ocean ridges, typically you have these transform faults where offsets. So I think of the ridge, mid-ocean ridge is like a baseball seam going around the world, that there are some offsets where the plates slide past each other, not away from each other. And what's happens there, because the spreading rate, it's actually double what the uh, spreading rate would be at those locations. And the faults we call there are, you know, translational or strike slip faults. And so they're typically some of the larger earthquakes. And uh, those are the ones you often see along the San Andreas Fault. And then you also have subduction zones where you have one plate going underneath another plate. And those are often some of the largest earthquakes. That's the Anchorage earthquake we're talking about. Uh, the Boxer Day earthquake that happened down in Indonesia, as well as the uh, earthquake that had the major tw tidal wave in, in uh, Japan. And that's where one plate's going down and uh, it'll break, oftentimes snaps, it's bending going down. And uh, the rebound of the plate response and stress building up is what causes a tidal wave. And those are what we call typically compressional faults or compressional earthquakes. <laughs> uh, to add to that, chat wants to know everyone's favorite tectonic boundary. Chat likes <laughs> convergent. <laughs> My favorite is divergent because that's where you find most vents. <laughs> My favorite is a dinner plate. <laughs> um, my favorite is divergent as well because I like vents because we can find the, a lot of animals. So, and with Maroki. I'm a transformer. Because <laughs> that's what I did, you know, a good chunk of my uh, PhD dissertation on as well as a postdoc work. I like how the, the back row, the science row, is all very f focused on their uh, their subject of passion. Yeah, yeah, well, in grad school, it's all you really have to, <laughs> that is a passion. to think about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's kind of 
kind of obsession. Speaking of, would you like another vent fact? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes, vent fact. <laughs> this one comes from the waters of Canada, um, the economic exclusion zone off the west coast of Canada. There is a vent field there. It's very well known. It's called the Endeavor Vents. But within the Endeavor Vents, there was, before it collapsed of natural causes, there was the tallest vent, sulfide vent that we know of. It's called the Godzilla vent. It is, it was 41 meters tall or 35 feet tall. Um, and most vents get around mm, 80 feet previously studied. So it was called Godzilla because it was extremely tall. And now it's no longer standing that tall. Darn. When did it collapse? I think it collapsed recently within the last five years because oh, really? i was looking at footage from 2015 and godzilla was still standing then yeah because i was there in 2015. Oh, okay uh, i was there first time in 2005 and then uh, 10 years later i'm now using that footage as part of my thesis oh I'm cool making photogrammetric models from that video footage we did the first uh, hd imaging there in uh, 2005 on the uh, thompson with an HD camera on Jason. I have a vent question. Sure. But going back to the Lost City, I heard that the Lost City was discovered completely by accident. Confirm discovered one. by who, sir? By accident. Oh. It was. Uh, was on an Alvin dive, I believe, and they just bumped into it. What a nice bump into, you know? <laughs> Are we able to, like, see vent fields from, like, satellite mapping and stuff? Are we able, is there any way other than just, like, finding them while we're diving? Yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> like, the hand The hand goes, I'm going to look. Did you have an no, answer? No, you Okay, now I feel pressure because <laughs> Rob definitely probably knows more than me, but I'll do my best. Here we go. Um, vents are first kind of suspected to be in an area from CTD casts and something called a toyo, which is basically an instrument that's towed behind the ship and lowered and raised in the water column. And you know if you're getting closer to a vent field or at least an active vent field if the chemistry of the water changes. So if there's more magnesium in the water um, and other chemical properties, then that kind of tips scientists off as to where there may be a vent. So they first get the chemical signature and then they do mapping. I think they move to bathymetric sonar mapping to see the profile and if it's higher in an area, then they know that there may be vents there. And then they go in with the ROVs and get visual confirmation. How does that sound? That's good. That good. <laughs> That's really good. Cool. Chat wants Paula to chime in. Um, tell us about the white hairy crabs, the yeti crabs. Well, the yeti crabs are squat lobsters in the family Crustiloidea and uh, superfamily, and they live only in, in hydrothermal vents. There are around five species, uh, mostly described from the Pacific Ocean, Costa Rica, also um, from, from several uh, hydrothermal vents in the Pacific. And the most interesting thing is they have a really um, bi a biological cycle very uh, uh, close to the, to the vent. So most of the, sp most of the specimens uh, aggregate around a uh, particular uh, range of the temperature. And they can be, they can reach like 100 cent uh, specimens per two meters square or something like that and they um, uh, grow bacteria in, in their cita and the relationship between these bacteria and, and the crab is trophic so they probably feed on this bacteria. How are they related to the Sasquatch lobster? The Aquasquatch? <laughs> no, no, it's no Aquasquatch, it's Sasquatch. Sasquatch? Yes! <laughs> Oh. Uh, well, it's if it's a Yeti squat lobster, it's got to be a cousin. Yeah. <laughs> Paula's like, 
No. <laughs> <laughs> the daddy crab are, are my favorite squat lobster. I was actually looking up some stuffed dolls of squat lobsters the other day to see what they had. And <laughs> they actually have little toy yetis yeah. that you could buy. Yetis are pretty famous. Yeah, they're pretty yeah. famous. Because on the last cruise, the, someone actually crocheted, you know, China Cup uh, stuffed animals and things. Yeah, the chai was telling us about that when we saw the China Cops and, you know, I had my little emotional moment <laughs> um, on that first or second dive that we had. They were saying that someone makes them. Number three, two. So chat's asking, how deep can Hercules go, and what is the limiting factor? Hercules can go 4,000 meters below the surface. Um, I think like pressures after that just gets too much for Hercules, right? Yep. Trevor, if you're not. That's right. Yep. Yep. Um, and for how long did they ask? No, they just asked how deep. But how long is just dependent on um. Like how long we schedule the dives for, it's us, and then they want to bring it up to, uh, you know, just empty out the samples and do maintenance as, as needed. Yep. And, and so, Trevor, if you really had to, I know it's rated to 4,000, how deep do you think you could go? 3950. <laughs> 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 Let's. Yeah, what? No, I was just. Oh. Um, we do have the 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 little Herc though that can go. What is it? Six thousand. I believe that's the limit. Meters. Which I think they're taking on the next expedition. They're taking little Herc. That's what Dwight said on the interaction. Oh, is it? Yeah. <coughs> little Herc is just a little version of Hercules. Without the arms. Without the arms, and all the sampling equipment. Cute. How much smaller is it than Hercules? Does anyone know? Littler. Thank you. <laughs> uh, maybe a third the size. Oh, so sweet. Basically just a camera platform. Yeah, just for looking. There was a chat, or a chat in the chat. There was a question in the chat a hot minute ago. Um, for Trevor and the pilots, if they're able to Go answer. Um, they want to know about the different types of like remote controls oh. that you have to pilot the ROVs. Rem different remote controls. So there was a, a camera angle that Dave had on of like a, a bird's eye view. Um, okay. And there's a few different uh, control panels you have in front of you, the one Annabelle's using. Um, the one in front of you. Yeah, uh, the one Annabelle's using controls the manipulator, the starboard manipulator, the craft predator. <laughs> and the joystick one in front of me controls the vehicle's thrusters. Then all the beep boop buttons all over the place control all the rest of the sensors, hydraulics, lights, cameras, etc., etc. Cool. But as far as controllers go, I think it's mainly just this joystick box and the craft controller. So I see you mainly use a starboard arm. What does a port arm do? Port arm is good for grabbing onto things that are not moving and not dynamic as a anchor point. Oh, okay. Uh, we use that a lot on the last cruise to help uh, connect subsea connectors to instrumentation platforms. You hang onto the platform with the port arm and use the starboard arm for more dexterous work. So it's a Hercules hold fast. Yeah, exactly. That's a great way to look at it. It's too uh. bad the word of the day isn't dexterous. That was a good vocab <laughs> right there. I I'm, I was trying to think of like clever ones, but at uh, 12, 12 a.m. this morning slash last night, I just couldn't think of any clever ones. So but don't forget, there's two. One that's a two-parter and one that's a one-parter. Um, chat wants to know, how long would it take to go down to 4,000 meters? Well, it's a great exercise for viewers at home. Hercules descends, descends at 30 meters per minute, and ascends at 22 meters a minute. So it'll be a lot slower coming up. So 
if you can do the math. Yeah, chat. Do the math. Yeah, chat. Chat math. Chat math. <laughs> and that is long division, just to let you know. Oh, there, now the chat's asking about the channels. So channel one will be the Hercules camera, and channel two is the Atalanta camera. And that's not little Hercules. Atalanta is the, um, like the, uh, the ROV that's like connected to the ship that Hercules is connected to. Um, and it's there to kind of help control Hercules and to help Hercules go down as far as it can go. Cause Hercules only has a 30 meter tether, correct? That's right, yep. 30, yeah, 30. Yeah. Sure, 30. Um, and then channel three uh, changes around. Right now you can watch Annabelle manipulating the arm. Um, and yeah, now it's now it's a bird's eye view of the, the front row. So can does Little Herc also need Atalanta when it goes down? Yes, it does. Yeah, still connected by a 30 meter tether. Still needs the eye in the sky. Oh, the... Um, person that crochets the Chana Cops is on the chat. Hello. They are taking a crocheting hiatus until Christmas. On my last cruise with the Nautilus NA-129, there was a chat viewer who um, knit us octopus hats. The knit you octopus yeah, hats? Yeah, mine is currently sitting in my house. It's purple and it's got long tentacles that come like down to here. They knit five of them and sent them out to people oh who were on the gosh. Nautilus on our watch. It's pretty cool. That's cool. They got in touch with an SCF. I'm Katie Doyle. Oh. I'm, spoiled. <laughs> I'm, I'm inspired to grow my hair like that now. <laughs> with the long octopus tentacles? It's actually very warm as well. I wore it all winter. I just hope it's not considered animal appropriation or something like that if I do that. <laughs> uh, I study octopus. Okay. <laughs> well, you no, do? They, no, they're on both. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the, the crocheted Chana Cups is very cute. Oh my oh god, it looks exactly gosh. like them. It's adorable. Oh my gosh. I like how you use like that fuzzy yarn too. It makes it have that I don't, the fuzzy appearance that the Chana Cops has. Great work. And it has Google eyes too. And the, the frown. Trevor, chat does not want to do math for you. Not for me, I know how fast it's going <laughs> to be. Where's the devotion, chat? <laughs> okay. What can we talk about? Spain and England in the uh, Women's World Cup. What is that, soccer? Football. Soccer. Soccer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's going to be fun. The England beat Nigeria on penalties. It was so painful for us. Oh. 
So I'm guessing you guys watch sports. World Cup. It's, it's not like a disease. Watching <laughs> sports. <laughs> Don't come near me, you watch sports. It's no, contagious. It can, no, it can be addictive. Mm. You don't like sports? Um, I don't really like watching sports, no. no. You are I, missing. I'm missing out. <laughs> I mean, I watch, I mean, I'm from Philadelphia, so when, you know, the Eagles are in the Super Bowl or the Phillies are in the World Series or whatever it's called, I'll watch just to, like, you know, get hype with the rest of the city if anyone's heard stories about Philadelphia going insane. Um, I'll, I'll watch it then, but otherwise, no. How about uh, Gritty? How about Gritty? I, I, there's not much to say about Gritty other than, you know, <laughs> Gritty is, Rob's looking at me with like, <laughs> question marks <laughs> popping up over his head. Gritty is like the hockey mask. I'll pull up a picture. <laughs> what, for the Flyers? Yes. That's all I know about I, Philadelphia sports is gritty. We don't really know what gritty is other than gritty. But um looks yeah. like looks like a typical Philadelphian to me. Yeah, it you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh Chad wants to know what kind of things are you looking for on this dive? Um, we kind of already said, but let's say it again. What are we What are we looking for, Paula, in terms of well, bio? Well, we, we are looking for new species, especially corals, sponges, and other taxa like uh, chinoderms or crustaceans. We are looking for new associations, uh, new observations on predation or symbiotic relationships. We're looking for also eDNA samples from the column water near coral gardens to study um, the diversity that we cannot uh, see in the video camera and things like that. And for the geology, uh, the seamount is located at the western end of the EEZ and it's part of a, a, a diffuse seamount chain that runs through the middle of it. And so what we're hoping to do is uh, see if it does have similar chemistry characteristics as the rest of the chain and get an idea how old the eruption might be. So we're looking for really good rock samples and, and to see uh, if there is any sort of uh, maybe carbonate reef material near the top. Yeah, pretty typical of what we've been objective like what our objectives were for previous dives this exhibition as well so trevor in your sonar you can actually see atlanta behind you there that's right yep oh, that's cool i never realized that yeah you can see how far away we are we should be 30 meters i'm about 25 right now yep 28 so i gotta stretch out a little bit Uh, chat wants, they said, please let everyone know I meant nerd watch as a compliment. Of course. It's affectionately given. Since when you guys talk about your hobbies and make references, chat can relate. I do like, maybe Gritty is a Yeti crab. Yeah, that's what one of the chat said. <laughs> gritty is a Yeti crab? They say challenge, find a deep sea creature that looks like Gritty. Challenge accepted. Okay. That's the front row again. Chat did do the math. Yay. Chat says it would take her approximately 2.2 hours to descend to 4,000 meters and three hours to ascend, question mark. Cool. Chat has two questions. The last book you read for fun. Who reads for fun? <laughs> <laughs> I do. I read for sport. <laughs> I read for competition. A competitive reader. <laughs> I think that's a thing, <laughs> is it not? Hmm. I'm sure it's a thing somewhere. I read about influencing bloggers. What do you say? Blogging influencers. They I read. read about I read about them. You read about them? No. 
gonna say? What are you trying to say? You trying to make fun of me? <laughs> Not to your face. <laughs> yeah, to my ear. I read a book called Big Magic, Creative Living Beyond Fear. It's by Elizabeth Gilbert. It's really good. Um, Elizabeth Gilbert is also the woman who wrote Eat, Pray, Love, but I have mm -hmm. not read that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's basically, um, I don't know, there's an idea in it that I really like because it, it connects to physics as well. It, it's kind of, it touches on the unified field, which is a concept within physics that like all thoughts and ideas come from an area. So any idea can be pulled from an area by any human and then placed back into that area if the human doesn't uh, commit to the idea and complete it um, and she used an example of having certain yep. ideas for books and stories that she wanted to write and then meeting people years down the road who wrote that exact story in that exact setting and I'm sure we've all had experiences where we had an idea for something but then we didn't execute it and then mm -hmm. we see that somebody else executed it exactly the way we would have done it so ideas coming and returning from the unified field I don't read books, but I listen to audiobooks. Um, I'm actually on the ship, I'm reading the Night Circus book because other people were reading it and I wanted to get involved. So I have been reading that. But the last like audiobook I listened to, I listened to a lot of nonfiction. Um, I listened to American Buffalo in Search of a Lost Icon, which was written by a like professional hunter. Um, and he got one of the few permits to hunt bison in Alaska. Um, so he kind of writes about the experience, like hunting that bison. But like in between that, he talks. Of, he like went on this big journey throughout America to like just learn more, like culturally and um, like environmentally about bison. And it, he kind of like goes through the history of bison in America, both you know, in connection to the land and connection to the people. And it was a really, really good book. Sounds interesting. Yeah. I'm glad bison are making a comeback. Yeah. Go Bills. <laughs> <laughs> Not those bison. <laughs> so for people that uh, read books, sometimes their, their lips move while they read. Mm -hmm. Do you think that happens when they listen to audio books too? <laughs> no. Just think it out. Uh, chat, I was joking about who reads for fun. Plenty of people read for fun. I tend to do other things than read, though. Like, I would rather draw a picture than read. Um, another question for Trevor, if he's not busy. Sure. Uh, Trevor's bio says that, um, Ocean Dynamics was contracted to do winter maintenance of the ROV. Does it need to, does it need such Please every season? Not. Is the vehicle yes. now 20 years old? Will it need to be replaced in the future? Well, uh, stand by. Uh, what is up to the jet, the uh, jet, um, pump? You what? You're going to restart the system. Okay, all right. Yeah. Can you please stow the arm? Thank you. Just making sure everything is fine with you. Annabelle, can you please put the arm away? Uh, in the water away, yeah. We'll come back to that question later. Yep, Sorry. yep. Yeah. Press the little blue button, which is not a blue button, but it's beside the, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to go over here. Yeah. It's 
good. We're going back to waypoint one. <laughs> I don't know what that is. I don't know too. So I need to check it out. I don't know what I want. <laughs> Why are you doing that? Oh mine. <laughs> Damn it. They're still on the go. Huh. Oh, I see movement. Oh, so most most curs are moving. Maybe no, another curs. good. This just means they're they're doing something. There we go. Oh. Let's see. What's he doing? Regaining. Okay, good. Yeah, so let me just get out here, Rui. Looks like they're kind of holding position now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Once you think they're stable, can you check in with them, make sure they're actually good to go? Trevor, do you want the back row quiet while you are doing? You can go. I can always mute you. Oh. Okay. I don't need to listen to you. Oh, okay. 
Just making sure. I wasn't sure. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. Yeah, go for it. No okay, problem. Okay, cool. Okay, we're back. We thought we had to be quiet, but apparently... I appreciate that it, when in doubt. Oh, uh, yeah, of course. I appreciate that. Thank you. You know, they drilled it into our heads. Uh, operation first. Yeah, roger. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Roger. Um, someone in the chat says bison and buffalo are different animals. At the American buffalo, uh, we also refer to as bison. So I know there's like the water buffalo in on different continents, but bison and buffalo are, are kind of interchangeable here. Um, chat was asking why were we so quiet um, we like to get quiet when the ROV team is doing something operational just so they can focus and so that we don't distract them Roger oh, I'm <laughs> <laughs> nothing happens without the ROV so it's primary concern yeah Nothing happens without the scientists. I mean... There's no way we get funding to come out here and just play around, so... Oh, true. I'm, you know, I'm sure there's people that would. Just to see. Nothing happens without the community. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to think about it. <laughs> yeah, there's... Everyone that comes out here is valued and appreciated and contributes to the team and yeah, there's no no need to feel that some people are more more valuable than others we're all we're all part of the team we're all working towards the same goal I love you too Trevor <laughs> but that period of silence we had really made my brain turn off Oh no. There's wild buffalo in Florida? What? I'm looking that up. Oh yeah. Painus Prairie? That's how you pronounce it? Preserve State Park? What doesn't Florida have? Oh, we have a cookie question in the chat. Chocolate chip cookies or oatmeal with raisin cookies? Oatmeal raisin all the way. Wow, oh, you, you don't really jumped on that raisin. fast. <laughs> yeah, chocolate chip is Trying good but not great. It yeah. hmm. That's my hot no. take of the day, hot flavor take. Warm cookie take. <laughs> I actually like both kind of interchangeably. I think chocolate chip's better, but I won't pass up a good oatmeal raisin either. Peanut butter. Peanut butter? I love peanut butter cookies. That wasn't part of the question. They were asking chocolate chip or oatmeal. As long as it's not mint chocolate chip. <laughs> Do you want me to eat thunder? Challenge day. What are the What are the things some of you like to do when we're not on watch? What's there to do on the boat other than eat the cookies? Sleep. Breathe. Sleep. 
sleep. What was the first thing, Paula? Read. Read. Sleep. <laughs> and eat. And eat. I like to knit. I brought my knitting needle. Really? Yeah. You've been knitting? Yeah. Where? In my bed. <laughs> <laughs> and on the monkey deck. <laughs> How do you knit on the monkey deck? Everything must be blown every which way. No, it's, it's not like a huge ball of yarn. It's a nice little yellow ball. What are you knitting? A scarf currently because oh. right now I, I don't want to knit anything hard because I'm already working on hard things. <laughs> so I, I do it to like turn my brain off. So oh. I can just do the same stitch repeatedly. So no chana cops or? Uh, Nothing too complicated, no. Nope. Octopus hats. Uh. <laughs> I wish. And puzzles? People, people do a lot of puzzles. Puzzles, yeah. Puzzles, yeah. We did like four puzzles. Five puzzles? We did a lot of puzzles. And they weren't like traditional puzzles either. They were like, they were wooden. And the all the puzzle shapes were like really weird and unique. Uh, I was up one day or one night for like three hours just sweating doing this puzzle. I've been making a habit to leave when there's about 10 pieces left. You don't want to see it finished? Well, I want other people to have the glory. Isn't that nice? I don't think I ever completed any of them. I, like, I wasn't in the group of people that completed them, but I, I started them off most of the time. I spend my free time responding to emails in mainland. Yeah, you're still working, aren't you? Same here, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a desk with a computer and monitors, and it's like when I get off shift, I'm going to work. Really? Emails Wait, aren't you retired? Emails to follow up on uh, maintenance projects here on the ship. We're, doing, we're currently troubleshooting an ongoing problem with the Cynodec recorders, uh, and there's an endless email thread back and forth with the vendor, uh, their support guy, and uh, try this, try that. We've been doing it over the course of months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, currently troubleshooting two other problems that are not major but uh, are annoying, and mm -hmm. so yeah, it's like work. When I'm on shore, I'm retired. Oh. So except when, except when I'm doing exactly the same <laughs> thing. I do remote uh, shoreside support for the crew on Nautilus. So I'm, you're you're basically sure. not retired. Yeah, true. I just don't have to get up and go to work. Yeah, the commute's great. Yeah, that the commute is great. great. I'm currently unemployed for this month. I quit my last job and got a new job that starts after the cruise. Good, congratulations. Okay. Nice. Thank you. So you're semi-retired. So I'm temporarily retired. Well, when I when I get back on shore, I'll get back to saving the world. Saving the world? Yeah. I, I had to, it's just too much right now. Oh, then who's going to save it while you're not doing I don't it? Hello. What do you, what, oh, that leads to a good question. What would your superpower be? You know what it is. I, do, I actually don't know what it is. It could be anything. Long division. Long division. Ew. <laughs> it's not fun. My superpower would be being able to hold your heart like you can hold your breath. Okay. I don't... What would, how would that benefit? Well, just think about it. My superpower is snoozing the alarm. Snoozing the alarm? <laughs> During two hours in the morning. <laughs> okay. So none of us are saving the world, I guess. Mine would be teleportation. There you go. With a force field so that you don't teleport yourself halfway through a wall or into a pole or something. Oh, you thought that out. Yeah. I would. I always wanted to talk to animals. That would be my superpower.
What does the box say? <laughs> really interesting. Like, I've been on other watches where this question comes up, and mm -hmm. the first answer generally is always flying. Oh no, I hate flying. The first answer that most people, you know, sort of the Superman style, flying. Oh, yeah. The second most common answer, invisibility. Yeah. Mm. Why? A little creepy. Why do people want to be invisible? I don't know. I'm just uh, just doing a statistical <laughs> analysis here. Yeah. yeah just based on, on past uh, watches where uh, this question always comes up. What would, yeah. what would be your superpower? Why would I, you hate yeah. flying? Yeah, right? Because, why do I hate flying? Why would you hate to have that I just I just really don't like Superman because he can fly. It just, him just, it just looks so, so dumb. It's, like, I just. It's the outfit, isn't it? But wouldn't it be fun? <laughs> I just don't like the fact that they're like, flying with like nothing helping them it just i don't know it just really rubs me the wrong way okay does he really need the cape what does he really need the cape too i don't know no see in the cape's a bad idea because then you'd get sucked into a jet yeah. propeller like in the incredible incredibles. incredibles yeah no cape styling I'm not sure if you'd get away with flying because there, there, so many countries have such tight airspace. <laughs> 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 I think it would turn out to be a pretty useless, um, <laughs> unless you got a permit or something. Well, <laughs> so if, if you can combine uh, flying with invisibility, so. And also not being able to be detected by radar. Yeah. You only get one power. <laughs> Choose one. Ah. Flying, not landing. <laughs> flying, not landing. I prefer landing. <laughs> but do you only get one superpower? What if there's a superpower that combines uh, a lot of those aspects? Yeah. Like, what are you thinking? The Flash. Uh, my uh, my well, favorite, a... my favorite superhero, the Flash. Mm -hmm. Super speed. Super speed allows you to be invisible because you mm -hmm. can vibrate all of your uh, atoms uh, and. Uh, and be invisible uh, so that light passes through you. You can pass through objects uh, when, you're, when you're vibrating all your atoms. You can uh, run, run really fast, of course, but you can also uh, run in the air by... Okay, I don't mind that kind of flying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just, yeah, I'm not a flyer. I, okay, I guess that counts, Dave. Just That's saying. A good answer. I've I've thought it out. <laughs> You've thought about it. I have. Chat wants to be uh, shapeshifters. That's there you go. Chat's superpower. You know, I think it would actually be a really good superpower is control of time. Not time travel necessarily, but be able to control it. You can slow it down, you can stop it, you can rewind it. I kind of agree with that. That's a good one. Time control. Like sure, in the Tenet movie? Oh, man. It'd also be good for confusion, like the Tenet movie. Yeah make blue water easier. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> the other side of uh, the blue water equation is that Annabelle is getting a whole clinic on operating the arm. I know, we're here trying to like scramble for conversation and Annabelle's. Oh, she's, uh, she's working it. She's, uh, yeah. she's doing touches here. She's doing boops. She's reaching in with the arm and touching the the uh, end of the manip in various places. Yeah, she's doing a great job. Yeah. 
Bubble's a good second if you're like looking for some weird perspective or in a blind spot, but it's not not as good as the Zeus. That's okay. That's the that's the right side one. Not holds on the top, jaw locks on the left, and right side is uh, continuous wrist. And while we're, we mention uh, Annabelle controlling the arm, I'd like to emphasize that Annabelle is the ROV intern. Um, so at Nautilus, we really <laughs> emphasize learning and growth. So even our interns um, can pilot ROVs. Yeah. Oh, yeah, great. That's fine. Chad wants to know if we've ever put a camera on the arm of Hercules. Mm. We might have once, but it's not common. We put hydraulic tooling on there before we had like handheld stuff or stuff mounted to the arm. Um, I believe Kraft actually sells new manipulators with a built-in camera. We do not have that, but maybe a potential upgrade in the future. So I have a question. Uh, what do we use Magnus for? And on, when? On this cruise, I don't think the Magnum will be used at all, probably. But uh, it's good for... You ever held a rope in one hand, dangling, and then tried to cut it with a knife? How uh -huh. do you think that would go? Probably pretty bad, right? So yeah. imagine there's fishing gear. You can hold it. It's usually stuck to something, stuck to the bottom. You can hold the other side of it with the magnum, and now you have a rigid line you can cut. So if we get tangled up, it'll help us get free. And as I was saying earlier, we were using it a lot last cruise for engineering work. Okay. But for regular operations, scientific sampling, etc., it's not uh, it's not really designed for that. Crab spreader. Which controller controls that arm? Uh, the GUI, actually. It's all done with buttons. Oh. We can only move, so right now Annabelle's using all seven functions. It's a seven function manipulator. All seven functions at the same time. We got jaws open and closed. We got wrist rotate, wrist pitch, wrist yaw, elbow, shoulder azimuth, and shoulder elevation. Uh, the Magnum also has those, but you can only use one at a time. So it's very slow and not very dexterous. Another question about Herc. Um, how, s how small... Alright, let me reword this one. Um, how small of an object can Hercules sonar detect? Hercules has, has sonar, right? Hercules has sonar. How small of an object? Ooh. Yeah. Depends on the object. Uh, depends on a lot of things. Let's yeah. say every, every condition is ideal. Maybe... Uh, we've seen a line in it that was long, but it was, I don't know, a quarter inch diameter, eighth inch diameter. That, that's incredible, actually. I mean, you could barely see it. We knew it, where it was. And then we're like, oh yeah, it's also in sonar. Neat. It wasn't very helpful for that, but it did see it. So what do we use the Herc sonar for? Herc has two sonars, and that's uh, spatial awareness is the short answer there. Knowing what's in front of us, what's behind us, what's all around us. Um, all right, can you hit the blue button, please? I'm just going to get back caught up ahead here. There's the sonar display. There's nothing to see right now because there's nothing around us but water. <laughs> I like uh, to see here. Move the, along. Uh, Herc sonar and the Atalanta sonar next to each other. But you can see Atalanta on the, uh, on the Herc southeast sonar. corner there. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, not right now. I'm actually, nope. Herc is a little above Atalanta. Okay. Well, I We've, see a little blip there. That is uh, noise. That's at about okay. 95 meters away. I hope that's not Herc, you know? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Once noise? I get a little bit lower down, then we can see Herc and the Atalanta sonar again. What would, you said it was, could be noise, what would that mean? Yeah, we have lots of different things that are acoustic on Hercules. All the sonars are sending out a sound signal, beam, pulse, whatever, at 
a given frequency and they listen for the reflection of that. But not just these two sonars that you're seeing in sat feed 3, or we're seeing in sat feed 3, we also have another sonar on Herc. We have uh, altimeter, we have um, all sorts of different things that send out pulses of sound. And any one of those, if they're a similar frequency, can show up in the sonar image. We try to not have uh, sensors working on the same frequencies. We try to spread them out a lot, but sometimes you can't be perfect, and there's a lot of potential for overlap there. We have them tuned so they're as little noise interference as possible, but it's not perfect. Alright, we have about 20 minutes to bottom-ish, maybe 25. Nice. So we're at 2,550 meters. Um, and we're diving to 3,200. The deepest dive of the expedition so far. We'll reach bottom in approximately 23 minutes. Yeah. Is there like a countdown somewhere of reaching bottom? Till days we, oh, never mind. Um, yep, on the Herc GUI screen, when I have it pulled up. I enter the bottom depth given to me from NAV and the multi-beam team, and that tells me how far away, or we know what depth we are, we know what the bottom depth is, we know what our vertical velocity is, and from that, the software automatically calculates time to bottom. Oh, I see it. Cool. But what if I hide it from you? No. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see right now it's reading 33 meters a minute. We travel down at 30. I'm just doing a little bit of fastness to get ahead of the winch. So the number is based on Herc's speed, which will change a lot as we go. I'm going to put this aside. I think it's time for a gauge check. Sure. Gauge check. Gauge check. Gauge check. Scoots. We do need a soundboard in here. All right. A soundboard really only for one one sound effect. What's that sound effect? When you turn on the lasers, it goes pew, pew, pew. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then it tells you that they're 10 centimeters apart. That's all I want. I just <laughs> want them to go pew, pew. All right, Dave, I think we can go back to non-super-duper extra-wide. Non-super-duper extra-wide I. Thank you. Dave, is the cinema cam working? Yeah. Oh, snap. Yes. Get these stats off the screen. I want the cinema cam. Nothing to see but blue. Uh, Just another angle of blue. Unless you want the stats. What has it been on previous dives? Perfect. I mean, you could put the stats back up if you want them. Yeah, OK. Now, as we go deeper, the air is going to compress more and the comp will shrink. It's all good. Thanks. Question in the chat, how do you adjust to living um, on the cruise? How do we adjust to boat life? I have to adjust to shore life. 
Uh, I can't speak for everyone, but there's a lot of people ha experience seasickness in the first few days, mm -hmm. um, and that takes a bit of adjusting. But in my experience, your body just kind of does it naturally, like getting your sea legs, I guess. Besides that, watch schedules are difficult to adjust to. Yeah. Um, though I don't think any of us here on the 8 to 12 watch can really complain. Um, it's a pretty good watch, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, I didn't have to do, well, other than the time difference adjustment, I didn't have to do any sleep adjustments. Although I have to get up at, you know, 4 a.m. sometimes for interactions. Oof. Can I get a root, please? Thank you. I always find myself a little shorted on sleep. Um, so I've been taking naps in the middle of the day and that seems to work out for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's some people come out here that are like very strict non-nappers and I don't know how they do it. Uh, I've only taken a handful of naps. I'm not really a napper. Chat says, wait, you're in the submarine? No. No. We're, um, <laughs> we're in the control van, which is located at the top part of the ship. Um, and we use ROVs, remotely operated vehicles. No. What if you zoom out a bit? Does it help us ever? For those of you who do multiple dive or multiple expeditions a year, how is that like? Oh yeah. To come back and forth and be between like living on land what and then living on the boat more? for like a month. Pretty fun. <laughs> uh, yeah, you just develop a routine. I you know, have a shoreside routine and a and a ship routine. Um, I have an opposite number that's uh, the video lead when I'm not out here and uh, I'm out about six weeks and then he comes out for about four to six weeks and then we swap back and forth. Um, we share the, the same room uh, and so all of our stuff we leave on board the ship. We put it in storage in the room uh, and uh, you know I, I walk off the ship and fly home with uh, a backpack. Oh and, nice. Uh, and then come back and all my stuff is here and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, and then it's uh, uh, personal comforts, I guess I would say for me anyway. Uh, I have my own sheets, my own pillow, um, my own towels, uh, my own stuff, uh, snacks, uh, condiments that aren't normally available on the on the ship. Different kinds of salad dressings. Hot sauce is always good. We, Stocked yeah. up on a bunch of different hot sauces last time. Dave is Cokes. the sauce master. <laughs> sauce master Dave. Sauce master Dave. Yep. Plenty of so Cokes. Diet Coke. Yep. <laughs> it's sailed with uh, two cases of Diet Coke and uh, two cases of um, soda water, fizzy water. So it's that kind of stuff. It's uh, you know, I have stuff that I need to have uh, with me, uh, that kind of stuff. So. Yeah. I know a lot of the SCFs, um, we were on a group chat and we were all like panicking about like what to pack and how to pack for like a month because we're not supposed to check our bags or anything um, in case they get lost. So we were all like panicking like, oh, oh my God, what are we going to do? Worked out though. So when we get to the bottom, we're going to be there in, I don't know, five, ten minutes. Uh, what's the first step? What are we going to be doing? White balance. Well, what I, you know, just like classic, uh, if there's a good rock there, we'll grab a rock. Okay. And if there's uh, biology that's preferred at the time, we'll get biology. But once we get that, then we can start moving up slope. Great, okay. And that's a good uh, introduction to just Explaining again, we're on an isolated seamount in the western region of the Johnson Atoll Easy. We're going down to 
3,200 meters, working our way up to, what do you okay. say, like 2,100 meters? Is yeah, that's what the, the peak is. The peak. Sure. If, if we get I'll give there, it a try. we're going to be time limited. Uh, this dive's going to last about 16 hours. We're already a couple hours in. I want to know how long the sunlight reaches down into the ocean. What's the depth that sunlight can reach? Usually 200 meters. Yeah. Uh, between 50 and 200 meters is the mesophotic zone. So we're well beyond that. Way down. Yeah. I try to bring a little sunshine everywhere I go, though. I could see it. <laughs> Although you're not down there, so. Oh, well. We are currently in the midnight zone, or the bathycologic zone. Ooh. 1,000 to 4,000 meter depth. That's where hydrothermal vents are. <laughs> oh, <laughs> vent facts. All my facts. What is it's the really shallowest <laughs> hydrothermal vent? 1,000 meters is 1, the shallowest it's been found, yeah, around there. How often do you have to service the lowering cable? The winch? I think they mean the 6-8 wire, the one that connects Atlanta to the ship. I don't really know what they mean by service, but when, I guess we, do maintenance. A, when we do a really deep dive, uh, the deepest dive of the year, we'll make sure to rinse off the salt water on the way back so it doesn't keep the drum all salty uh, during storage. And about once a year, we lube it as well. It's made of a bunch of metal strands that want to move freely uh, amongst each other. So having a bit of cable lube on there is helpful for that. Currently, it's got plenty of goo on it, so we don't need to do that anytime soon. Uh, the the chat question that you had, Trevor, a little while ago oh, is, yes. is back. Um, I, he reworded it. Uh, as Herc is 20 years old with metal fatigue, technology change, um, will it make it age out? What's the project lifespan or something like that? Yeah, right. Well, Herc had a major, major upgrade over the winter, brand new foam and frame. Speaking of metal fatigue, it was time to retire the old frame due to age. Started to see some cracks appearing and corrosion so brand new aluminum frame brand new foam block to match and uh, yeah I don't know there's depends on how you define what's that um, the ship of Theseus ship of Theseus thank you yeah is uh, we have the ROV of Theseus exactly <laughs> we're gonna rename Hercules to Theseus so yeah we're changing things we're upgrading things a lot of it already is not what was the original Herc um, but at some point that might stop too and we might do a complete rebuild to get some additional functionality, size changes, who knows what the future holds. So there's no good answer to that question, but we are upgrading things iteratively. Just keeping on top of it, staying current. I mean, the cinema cam is hopefully going to be a new addition. 
Um, zinc anodes. New zinc anodes. Ooh. Upgrade. <laughs> Big upgrade. Yeah, it's a hard question to answer definitively. Trevor, do we have a lot time for Elias to do a quick overview of the plan here? Sure, yeah. Is Seven it possible to pop that up, Dave? On channel three, everybody, you can see our plan overview. Let me know when we are good to go, Dave. You're good. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. I have a one. Um, like um, Steph said, this dive would take place at the western limit of the Justin Atoll, easy. And um, so the dive is also located on the ridge of this um, western side of the seamount. And um, the dive begins at a depth of about 3,200 meters, and um, you know we proceed along the ridge. So on my screen here, you, uh, we have paid with point one. It's kind of clustered because we have so many things going on there. We have the vessel, we have the ROVs, and we have the track lines. So that's why you can't really see the one. There, but you can see that we proceed from wave point one to two to three along the ridge. And when you look at the bathymetry, it's kind of, when you look at the scale, and even the contours there, it's kind of, um, it's wider compared to wave point four, five, and um, six. What that, what that means is that is less um, steeper, so it's, it's compared to when we now get to um, so from waypoint three to four, that's really where it's gas, it starts to get like really steep. So um, we go from waypoint three to four, five, and six, which is our last waypoint, and that's at a depth of about um, just a sec, 2,200 meters ish, and that's at the summit of the peak. I'm not sure if we will get to this to the summit, but we'll see how far we go. And then um, the vertical relief, like the difference between waypoint six and waypoint one, is about 1,000 meters. So that's the kind of um, that's how we are kind of um, proceeding al um, along the the ridge. And um, any other thing that I'm, I'm missing here, and the total length of the track that we hope to cover is about um, five kilometers. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Elias. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Cool. And that was, that's not a, someone asked if that's a weather map on Channel 3. It's not. It's it's a topographic map. Is that what it is? Yeah, it's, it's a bathymetric map with the yes. topography lines on it. So that's the sea mount that we are on. Yeah, I can yeah. zoom out a bit to, uh, yeah, we don't have everything. Yeah, we have it, the one in color. So let me zoom out a bit more. So we can see the sea mount on the back, like on the background, but because we want to make it more apparent, so that's why we color the other one rainbow. The other one is just the normal bathymetry, like um, color map. Yeah. So, but the rainbow is really where we, is really the, the site, and that's why we kind of make that more, you know, more colorful, so yeah. that's. I, I still remember I was giving a presentation one time and someone asked if the sea floor was really that color. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. <laughs> What'd you tell him? <laughs> <laughs> no, I had to come clean. <laughs> nice. But, you know, we generally use uh, the colder colors for deeper and the warmer colors for shallower. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah. Yeah, and you can see that the seamount's, like, pretty big compared to, like, where we're exploring. And uh, Elias and the mappers do a nice job. They use a false illumination where they kind of illuminate things from the northwest, mm -hmm. like the sun's there. Oh. To make positive things look positive and negative things oh, look negative. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks well, all for that. <laughs> why is it from the northwest? It's for some reason that's the way the eye works. It's funny if you kind of do it from the southeast, it looks like it's going down. Yeah. It's really a weird. Huh. Interesting. I guess because it's north up. You yeah, know, maybe, like you're yeah, just, just maybe, seeing things in front of yeah. you and the light coming from above. It's got to be like that. Yeah. It's got to be. And, uh, um, Elias, you have a shout out. They love hearing from Nav and seeing the maps. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, my Nona says hi. Hi, Nona. Hi, Nona. Hi, Nona. You can give me a quick, whatever, USBL reset. O okay, so you have your. Uh, when we hit 50, yeah. I'll pull the stick. Sure. 
Yeah, just to the USBL mark, and then we'll do a cursor one later. You know what I mean? So, like, if you can, instead of solution to cursor, you do, uh, sorry, instead of DVL reset it, it, to cursor, you'll do DVL reset to USBL. Okay, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, exactly. Good to go for these? Yep, but you can do, you do the reset first. Yeah. Nice. Now you can send, now you can send position source, yeah. So chat's asking how long do you expect to take to travel Thanks. from waypoint Great. one to waypoint six? Um, well the dive is going to be about 16 hours, including uh, descent and ascent. So we'll be on the sh bottom for what, like 12-ish hours? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I, normally I think it would take us, you know, a little longer I think one more than this there. dive. So I'm not sure we're going to be able to get to waypoint six on this dive. But for the first uh, two waypoints, we should be able to make decent time because yeah. it's relatively flat and uh, maybe not too much biology. Uh, but. Oh from like uh, waypoint three yeah. to waypoint five, we'll probably end up going a little slower. So if yeah. we get to waypoint five, you know, I'd Do be happy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you, you don't think we're gonna see very much biology? Not as much. I mean, you, you typically get more and more as you go farther up. Yeah. You should get shallower. But hey, I hope I'm surprised. You Chat? never know sometimes. Chat wants to see a hagfish. All stuff? But I don't know if we'll see one. I've never seen a hagfish out here. Is anybody? I've seen one up north. Yeah, um, yeah on the ONC cruise, Patrick? we saw a hagfish Thrusters near enabled? the Endeavour vent field. How deep? I don't think it's on. 700? <laughs> <laughs> I want to say. <laughs> oh, there it is. Oh, the bottom. <laughs> Sand and rocks. Yes. They can be found at depths from 53 to 3,700 feet, so 16 to 1,100 meters. Yeah. A little too deep for us on this dive. Yeah. Yeah, my first guess is this is uh, sheep blows again on top of this little... Uh, ridge coming down. I actually expected a little more sediment here, but... Uh, mm. Yeah, more rocks and sand. This, this is encouraging. Be able to see a lot of good rock. Can you bring your heading over <laughs> to 100, please? Roger. So let me know where we want to start when we are good to start moving. Yeah, no, yeah, we got to do some setup first. Okay. You got to do your reset. I've got to do white balance and also set my trims. So I'm going to hold right here for a minute. And then we'll do white balance. Oops, sorry. Rolling and clicking mouse wheels and all sorts of good stuff there. Get this, right. get this out of here somehow. I don't know. It's bad it's not wireless. E. I mean, it has a wireless function. Just don't know. Oh, oh, okay. All right, can I get bubble on craft, please? Roger. Can I get downlight on, please? 
Roger. Down light on. Do you want to turn the laser on? No. Nope, no laser. Okay. Not until we're done the white balance. Okay, Dave, go ahead there, please. Tilt up just a little. There you go. That'll do it. Right there. Good enough. Good. All right. Black balance first. Herc going to black. Now. Hey. White balance now. It's all good. And I'm holding a one spot. Once you've got a cursor drop, you can reset me. Okay, white balance complete. Thank you. Thank you. Just give me a heads up before you do it, Elias, but you can start looking now. Right, Come on, booty, why are you jumping everywhere? <laughs> that might be all you get. You need the bio? Like yeah, that's what? fine. Oh, no, no, I'm fine. Okay, you're good. I'm fine. Go for it. Go for it? Yeah. So, Great, thank you. All right, oh. science. Yeah. Science. So, first step is go, yeah. look at this thank thing. You. You're muted. <laughs> 